it all started because of one article on Forbes that said ADHD is the entrepreneur's superpower. I was so excited about that article that I screenshotted it. It was in 2015. It's still on my personal Instagram right now. It says ADHD, the entrepreneur's superpower. And I was so happy about it and so happy to read it that uh, it just stuck in my brain. And it was like a fuel for me to just keep on pushing and keep on thinking that I had that thing, you know, that could make me better than other entrepreneurs. So it could be that it's true or it could be that it's something that led me to believe that it's true and therefore led to me to put myself in a position where I could make things work. But either way, it's the belief that you have that will always make the difference. Welcome to Successful with ADHD. I'm Brooke Schnittman. Let's get started. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Successful with ADHD. Today, I have my friend and ADHD advocate, Amin Finch. He's the founder of the Divergence Group and creator of ADHD Doers, which I'm sure a lot of you follow. It's a pleasure to have Amin on today with us and share his ADHD journey. It's a pleasure for me to be here too, uh, Brooke. Thank you for inviting me. I'm excited. <laughs> Amin usually doesn't show his face much on social media, so I dragged him out from behind the curtain to show his face because he's done so much to contribute to our community and help spread awareness. So, Amin, when did you learn you had ADHD? Being young, I never really paid attention to school. And since I never paid attention to school, I didn't even know I had trouble paying attention to school. But at around 17, 16, I wanted to uh, start paying attention because I needed to start thinking about my future, thinking that, you know, school is the only way to think about the future. I started like taking it more seriously, but once I took it more seriously, it was just impossible and manageable, not doable. And therefore I just didn't, uh, I, I, instead of like pursuing, uh, like finding solutions with, uh, which I did for a while, I just started Googling what is wrong with me. Why, why am I stupid? Why can't I pay attention? And I literally write on Google, I sit down, try to listen, but I do not listen in class. What is wrong with me? You know, things like this. And, uh, after a while, like I found out about ADHD and, uh, it all made sense to me. Mm -hmm. So you found out after 17. Um, so what was it like before the ADHD diagnosis? You said that in class, you couldn't pay attention. What was school like for you? Uh, one school was like jail. I, I know that one uh, other podcast you've had with some other entrepreneur just said that it's a jail. And I commented, I feel like it's jail <laughs> as well. So it felt like jail for me. It felt like a uh, place where uh, I would just go and die for eight hours. And two I came back home and uh, home also felt like jail because my parents were uh, strict and were uh, too focused uh, on school. And so I didn't go out to play. I didn't play video games the way I wanted to because like they were always like focused on on like whether I'm studying or not. So. Yeah, I spent like eight hours there. Then I had to spend a few more hours doing homework that my father had invented for me. Uh, so it's extra homework? Extra homework, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think that without those things, though, that my father had done to me, uh, uh, done with me, I, uh, like it was just with him where like he used, to, he used to force me to do practical exercises to understand and go and pass exams. Otherwise, uh, at school, I literally, I don't have um, any memory of me paying attention at all in the classroom, like at all. I, like it was just me talking or dr daydreaming, looking at the window and thinking when I'm gonna grow up, I'm never, I'm, my job will be outside or does, I just need freedom, like this is, I used to look at birds, for example, from the window and be like, I wish I was a bird. I would be flying now. I wouldn't be in a classroom. I wouldn't be forced to be in some building or establishment. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So you were a free spirit and you literally just wanted to free yourself like a bird and fly away from the classroom. Exactly. Yeah. 
So your father's a doctor, correct? Yeah. Okay. So that being said, he had high expectations for you at home academically. Academically, yeah, because he was he was kind of like a genius with everything that is related to school. He still like remembers everything related from to school from age five to like eighteen or something. Like he remembers every single thing. And he would study with uh, with me even like at age seventeen. He would just ask me questions about stuff. And I'm like, how do how do you remember all of this? So <laughs> for him, that's that's the the word. But uh, eventually, after like after uh, fifteen, he stopped being that strict. But he started hiring like tutors that came to my home for hours after school. So. So you really had no social life. Um, uh, I mean, I had my sat after after fifteen or fourteen. Maybe I had my Saturdays. I used to go out every Saturday, but uh, apart from this, no, not really, no social life. Just uh, the internet, and uh, uh, thankfully, after the invention of uh, smartphones, I didn't didn't like really had to hide. I could be like, oh, yeah, I'm studying, but I'm on my phone or something and uh it's it's the, like i spent a lot of time on the internet just learning and being curious about the world like the internet was my way of being kind of like free yeah wow so i mean the internet was your way of being free and that's what you do right now at 25 you are you use the internet as a business <laughs> yeah yeah exactly well i use it as a business i use it to build communities make connections, network. In real life, for example, I live in France. Like I have no business connections here in France. I have nothing uh, going on that much. Yeah, on the internet, it's it's this is where it's all happening. But in Morocco, I have a lot, of, I, a big network though. Because I'm Moroccan by the way, <laughs> I didn't say that. Very cool. So you build communities. So after you were 17 and you learned you had ADHD, what was the first thing that you did with that diagnosis? Well, first of all, I started Googling, am I going to be homeless if I have ADHD? <laughs> that mm. is the first thing I started Googling. Because again, this is my this was my first concern to just be uh, a shame to my family or something, uh, you know, like uh, traditional family in Morocco. And like I, I, when I found out that it was the, the solution, I like it was the, the answer. I also started to just look for articles that were that had a positive frame towards ADHD because there weren't many it was just like very depressing uh all over because they just kept talking about like the bad things that happened and now I understand why because you know I made my the name of my page was ADHD doers and the first thing I wanted to do is just just talk about like the strengths of ADHD years but once I started doing this I got attacked a lot about it uh, and people really wanted to feel that someone understood them and someone relate to them and so on i think that is what attracts people the most so now we kind of like do a little bit of this to attract people but then like a little bit of framing afterwards where we're like okay but it's not all, all that bad you can still make it you can still fix this and that you know mm -hmm. and give it a, a positive mm -hmm. frame but it's still important to kind of like attract people with the wrong things that, that come with ADHD because that's where they are in that moment. They are dealing with the wrong things. They are not seeing the positive thing at the right. moment they are dealing with them. And first they want to be like, oh, that's that's the explanation of that's what I'm me. having. And then, yeah. And then, well, now what can I do with it? But there are some people though who, are, who don't care about what can I do with it. They just... <laughs> No, they just like to to be in the the pity of feeling bad for themselves, and this is going yeah. to this is definitely going to hurt some people's feelings, and I might get on like subscribed, but it's true. Like some people just don't want to see ADHD as something they can get out at, get out and have a superpower with. And I honestly believe if you can harness your ADHD with the tools, I mean that you give, and so many of us give, and you know how your brain works and you work with it and you're patient and you try, it can be a superpower. Look at you, you're 25 and you're making more money and creating more of an impact than 
people in their 40s, 50s, 60s. I mean, no one taught you how to do this. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's just the hyper focus on obsession, honestly. But it all it all it all started because of uh, one article on Forbes that said ADHD is the entrepreneur's superpower. I always talk about this story because I was so excited about that article that I screenshotted it. It was in 2015. It's still on my personal Instagram right now. Uh, it says ADHD, the entrepreneur's superpower. And I was so happy about it and so happy to read it that uh, it just stuck in my brain. And it was like a fuel for me to just keep on pushing and keep on thinking that I had that thing, you know, that m could make me better than other entrepreneurs so it could be that it's true or it could be that it's uh something that led to me to believe that it's true and therefore led to me to put myself in a position where i could make things work but either way it's the belief that you have that will always make the difference if you have a negative belief then uh then yeah it's gonna be negative and for these people that are negative now they may just be in a period where they're negative like they they may be negative about it for two or three years, but maybe in the fourth year, they're going to change or something, but uh, they may not see it now. Yeah. Totally. Well, I love how you gravitated to a 2015 article and you said at that point, okay, they're speaking to me. They believe in ADHD entrepreneurs and I am going to be one. And you hung on to that. So it was that belief that you hung on to and look at you now, you know eight years later. So I agree with you, some people and me included, you know, have been through like dark places and are currently going through dark places. And maybe even if you're in a positive space, you might go through a dark period at some point. But it doesn't mean that like in a year from now or in a two years from now, like I mean said, you won't have that realization that, hey, like, I don't like this feeling. And I'm gonna and I have that energy to just like do something. Just like the first thing that I can actually do for myself, whether it be sleep, eat, drink water, literally anything. Like I'm not asking myself why I want to do it. I'm just going to act and do. And I'm going to start building that momentum just so I can get out of my own way right now. Exactly. I agree. Yeah. So you got your diagnosis, you were connected to the Forbes piece, and you have grown your community on ADH Doers. So much like right now, you're almost at a million followers. And this, I know you, you took off pretty rapidly. And in the beginning of the year, I think you were at 300,000 followers. So obviously your message is resonating with a lot of people. So you had said you meet the person essentially where they are by giving them the understanding that they're not alone, right? Like this exactly. is the way that people sometimes feel with ADHD and this is what you can do about it, right? But what I love so much about your account, I mean, is that there are so many overnight like ADHD comics or memes and it's constantly making fun of people with ADHD. And yeah, it's fun in the beginning to like laugh, but after a while, it's like, wait a second, like, why do I keep putting myself down? It's almost like reinforcing the negative parts of ADHD and putting it right in front of you over and over and over again. And with ADHD, we get all these negative messages anyway. So what I love about ADHD is you don't do that. You know, when I was 17 again, I used to watch videos. For example, there was uh, some guy called Niga Higa on YouTube and he made a video about like uh, ADHD. Here's how my ADHD shows up or something like this. And I remember I, I got I got goosebumps now because the amount like the way I laughed watching that video was crazy. And uh, I I'm a person where who when I see someone who is like me, I laugh like it's so funny to me. And you know like all of these pages because now it's not just ADHD doers that is almost at a million. Like the whole network is at 3.5 million followers now, and all of the rest uh, of them are like funny. And, and memes and tweet, funny tweets and so on. And it, it, these are reflections of uh, how I am really. I'm not trying to follow some crowd. I'm trying to just be exactly like unique and do something that I, uh, that I want to do and, and show it up as my personality in, in, in the form of, of content, if that makes any sense. Right. So you're not just doing something to get followers. You're doing stuff 
that meet you where you are that people also relate to. Yeah, that's exactly stuff that I would watch and I'd be like, ah, oh, I love this, you know, that's, that's what I approve in terms of content, because there are a lot of people who make content, but then things that are approved is, oh, I would, I would love to watch this on Instagram, you know, and, and I, I base it off on, on how I would perceive the post. It's always, if it's funny, then I'll post it, mm -hmm. then it should be posted mm -hmm. because I, I, I just love to to laugh about them. Yeah. So how do you manage everything? You're running a 3.5 million follower uh, account basis. I know you have plenty of books on uh, your website that you sell. You have a group of professionals that work with you and uh, you're always thinking about the next idea and how you can help the ADHD community. What's your trick? to all of this okay so first it's true that i've never been like okay so what do i do next i somehow always have the next step available in fact i always have so many steps available that i don't know exactly what to choose so i start them all and just deal with the pain of managing everything at once but I, it makes me busy and i like it for example with the pages i i have partnerships there are some of the pages that i just control in terms of what is promoted in them and so on. And I keep uh, uh, helping those people who manage them. They are people who find content somewhere and then repost it. But there are also pages that I have bought or acquired after they grew. And there are pages that I have grown myself from zero. So any page that is not ADHD doers, I have partnered up with the creator of ADHD Elite and he manage, uh, manages the content. It's a partnership where I don't have to uh, manage the, like, the, like the day to day of them, but at the same time, he knows that I'm working on all of the business side that, uh, and so on. So he can focus on what he wants and I focus on what I want. I really like the business side of, I like business in general. Actually, it's, it's my passion. It's like a, uh, I'm collecting like pages or collecting businesses and like buying new pages, buying new businesses that I, if I can. Yeah, it's, it's fun, but how do I manage all of this is through working with a COO, as I had told you the other day, uh, Jason, uh, he manages the day to day and Jason uh, manages heads of certain departments. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I'm not going to say that I run things in the best way. I mean, I reinvest every single dollar I have into growing the, the our communities into growing our impact into creating new solutions. I am not yet uh, very proud of the solutions that I, that I have now. We just have books, right? Mm -hmm. I'm working on like AI tests, trying to develop AI tests. I'm trying to develop like AI tools with experts. I'm trying to, to develop mm -hmm. uh, directories that, that are worldwide. I'm trying to like uh, expand into new languages at the same time in order to uh, for the language, like in order to increase awareness about ADHD. And this is, this will be good for, for everyone who works on mm -hmm. ADHD, by the way, and everyone who has ADHD in other countries, uh, because like you increase awareness about ADHD and ADHD gets more attention and so on. And then working on other neurodiversities as well, because there are some things that people are not even aware of. Like, for example, dyslexia, there are some people who struggle at school and they don't even know or who have struggled at school their whole life. And now their whole self-esteem is shattered because they think they're stupid. While it's dyslexia, it's normal. Like you have like a lot of other crazy, crazy skills that you can leverage apart from like being able to read books, I guess. And uh, like, for example, Richard mm -hmm. Brunson is one of the biggest advocates for this. I'm always working on new things, always working on new things, always. Uh, if, if anything were to happen tomorrow, I'd be homeless. Let's just say that even though like we make a huge amount of, of revenue on what we do, we are focused. It's true that I focus a lot on revenue and on, uh, on being profitable, but I do it because like I have understood a while ago that it's like money is like super important to be able to build anything. Yeah. Understood. Understood. Yeah. But you obviously have tried and tested things and you have an accountability chart for the divergence group. So you have your COO, you have the marketing, the sales, all of that. 
where did you learn business from? I would say to start that I uh, was in a business school and I have a, a master's degree from it. I uh, specialized in digital marketing, <laughs> but <laughs> this is where the hack is. I only did those things because I was already obsessed with them from the internet, so I don't have to study at school, if you know what I mean. It, it was your passion. Where did I learn is through, uh, I think I read so many books. I, I, I read more than 100 books really about business. After some point, like I read a new book and it's like repeated. And it's so interesting. Oh, yeah, because it's the same older people who've created these ideas. Like um, exactly. Andrew Carnegie is one of the first people who created ideas on marketing. And all of these people take those ideas and manipulate them into different ways. So, yeah, it's a lot of repeated information. Exactly. It's a lot of repeated information. But then what I learned through this is that, okay, information usually has a source that comes from a long time ago, but then each person shares it in a different way. There is no originality. So what, what really is the key is to take something that comes from a long time ago and just give it your style. And that's really how the mm -hmm. world works with every single thing. And that's what oh, I, yeah. uh, these are some principles that I apply. That's when I found out about biography. And that's the be biographies and case studies are the best ways to learn about business because you get to see what others have done in a lot of different contexts. For me, I have a fish memory. Obviously, I don't remember what I have read, but I like I have convinced myself that these things stay in my unconscious and they manifest as an idea later on somehow. <laughs> a hundred percent. A hundred percent. It's funny that you say that because going way back to school, I think I was in elementary or middle school. I remember we were in art class and we had to do some sort of comic. And I created a, I think it was a Ziggy comic. Remember Ziggy? No, I don't know I don't if you know. had it in Morocco, no. No. but I created something and I was like, and, and people were like, that was in the Sunday, like New York times. Like you copied that. I'm like, Oh my God, I didn't realize that I did that. It was just in here and I thought it was my own idea, but it wasn't. So it's so funny <laughs> how that can happen, right? Like it's in our subconscious mind. And, but that kind of goes to the principle of like, your subconscious is really strong. Like Powerful. it can become a part of you. So if you start focusing on the things that you want and you need in your life to grow, that will become a part of you and you will rewire your neural pathways. So the more information you consume, the more it translates into plans and actions later and ideas. I agree. As long as you, as long as you take the action, right? Because a lot of us ADHDers can be like really amazing researchers and want to continue to get into that hyper focus of learning, right? We love to learn about things that are interesting to us. That is the superpower, no? Uh, because uh, I have put myself in a situation where my action is sending a message to my COO or my assistant or my partner Correct. or a head of something. Let's do this. This is the, you know, like, I'm researching, I'm learning, I'm, I'm finding out all of the, those new things that are happening somewhere. And I get the idea. I'm like, okay, they applied this in this industry. It could work in my industry as well. Boom, boom, boom. What's up? Let's do this. It's uh, yeah. Okay. Good idea. Let's test it. It then leads to result or it doesn't lead to results, but, uh, that became my job to do this thing. You know, like it became my job to just be in my place of performance, you know, my zone of performance. Right. Your zone of genius. So you figured out how to make that happen for you so you don't get stuck in the weeds on things that don't work for your brain. You made it happen and you didn't make yourself feel bad that you need some other people to perform on your weaknesses or the things that you don't enjoy doing, like the execution yeah. piece, <laughs> the detail. <Exactly. laughs> right? Like, exactly. here's my visionary idea now run with it <laughs> that's that's exactly it and the more you start taking you know, the, like the more you start testing those ideas the more the better the quality of that those ideas become as well because uh now you have like the our, i think our brain really remembers patterns really well and so you test things that are in a certain category and then you take those things 
later on and it becomes again in your subconscious of whether it works or doesn't work and then when you want to come up with a plan you're like hmm i have a good i've had a good experience with something that was similar to this so i'm gonna try it again so it kind of like gives you more dopamine and energy again to try it's it's anyway i think it's about gamifying our brain and gamifying like uh uh, our life as it is years that works the best definitely we need novelty we need those micro changes to make really big macro changes we can't keep doing the mm-hmm. same thing over and over again we're gonna burn out no because of underwhelm <laughs> uh yeah well that i think that it's that is like the the most depressed ADHD years in my opinion i have friends like this and i know their ADHD years they so i have literally friends who who are ADHDs. I work in this field and I tell them, you, I think you have ADHD. You go get tested and they're like, ah, I don't think that's true. But they're literally doing something that is repeated. They're hating it. I I see the way they their behavior is and so on, which is completely congruent with the stuff that we post and everything. And uh, yeah, so we can be also stubborn as ADHDers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have re- very rigid thinking, right? Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, no, I think that like this really gives um, some clarity into how your brain works because you are successful with ADHD and you're continuing to learn from other people's mistakes and also your mistakes, right? So you're learning yeah. fast from how other people did it, but you're also learning from how you're taking risks along the way. Yeah, I well, I'm I'm not I, I wouldn't call myself successful now. I mean, I'm I'm just still in a stage where I'm uh, uh, like the job is not done yet. You know, it's never done. It's never exactly. So uh, I am in a position where I'm I could seem successful to a lot of people. Yes, and I did achieve a lot, but like uh, everything can burn down fast. I mean, it's it's still not solid. I still have not created something that is like. Super useful. It's so hard for ADHDers to just take the compliment. We're not used to it, right? Like your friend Dr. Halliwell, like the we <laughs> we really are just so used to getting negative feedback. So when we hear positive feedback, we don't believe it very often. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I'm just not satisfied yet. I don't want to be. I want. I don't want it to get into my head and be satisfied with it. To be honest. You? you don't have to be satisfied, right? But you could at least acknowledge, wow, look at where I am now. Look at where I was. Look at what I tried well, to accomplish. And I'm like way past that, so. right? So like enjoy the moment and then move on. But you don't have to like sit in your and loathe your success. But like you've got into that, pla- that, um, that milestone on the mountain. Enjoy it before you keep going. You know, the only moments where I feel like this way is when I'm, for example, in a club and the, there's the my, my favorite music playing and I'm finally starting to dance and I'm like, wow, I, I deserve dancing here right now. I deserve, you know, that's the only moment where I feel like I could, I could really enjoy, enjoy that because before, uh, I, I think from the first moment we met, I had not achieved yet really what I wanted to. It was like still small and so on. And uh, I never went out anywhere. I used to stay in my room all the time. So you punished working. yourself, yeah. I did really punish myself. If I if I go out, I do not feel good. I uh, I start hating myself like the whole time I'm outside. I'm like, what what am I doing here? Do I I don't even deserve this? Why am I here right now? You know, I used to say those things to me. And I think it's good for me, honestly. But I did. I, I like this way of thinking. Okay. Hard work pays off, but also at the same time, like whatever your goals are, right? Like if you're focused on only becoming successful in business, then that's what you're focused on. So you aren't necessarily going to put your attention into your social life or into rewards and freedom. So that's what you were hyper focused on. Now I know that you have a little bit more of just business in your life. Yeah. <laughs> I have so we because of the obsession, we go back to the hyper focus and obsession. I have not always had like a uh friends, for example, I have no friends that think like like that with whom I could just 
start talking about like what I I'm, what I'm obsessed about because I tend to go so deep into a topic that no one I can talk to could be stimulating enough for me or I could be stimulating enough for them to hold a conversation or a real friendship really and uh, now I have some like business friends and they're friends and uh, and uh it, it's fun and everything but we don't really talk about the things that I I'm good at or or that they're good at because I cannot pay attention on about what they're good at and they're also in these years by the way I cannot pay attention on, on the things that they're obsessed about and they cannot pay attention about the things that I uh I'm obsessed about and then we have this just a little bit of talking a, over each other yeah like a common point that is like business where we spend some time and like have a laugh and that's it okay <laughs> I've, yeah I've, so yeah. I I I get it my husband has extreme ADHD and I'm so glad that I am married to him because we do that like we both get on tangents about our ADHD and our vision and growing and it like energizes us we help each other lift one another up in the past I would date people who would condone me thinking about work or thinking about like the next thing um so it's really important to surround yourself with like-minded people whether they have ADHD or not like someone who lifts you up and yeah of course sometimes like we talk too much and we need to wheel back a little bit because not everyone wants to hear every single idea that we have. But if if we surround ourselves with people who lift us up and energize us, we're in a good place. Yeah. Uh, but about friendships, is it, do you meet a lot of people who don't really have a lot of, or have deep friendships or is, is it common yes. for ADHD? Surface level. I think with ADHDers, we very often are excited about like that new friendship, right? We have that dopamine that just kicks in when we feel like we have known someone for a really long time, right? And we just like go straight in, head in. Same thing with relationships. And then we get bored after a while because it's not as exciting to us anymore. Or we RSD as well. Mm-hmm. And that, and that's one thing. And another thing is maybe you've had friends for a long period of time and just out of sight, out of mind. Like I moved to Florida. My friends growing up are from New York. I don't see them very much. So sometimes I forget to text or reach out because they're like not top of mind, unfortunately. And then you blame yourself. You feel guilty because they send you messages and then you forget and, and you feel you like a bad friend, feeling like a, a bad person. Yeah. And then you, well, when you start feeling like a bad person, you further drift away from them again, because you feel like, you know, you're just toxic around them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. But it's like this story that you create in your mind. There's not necessarily a reality to it. And we just yeah. feel because we're so empathetic very often with ADHD that we feel like we're not good enough to be their friend because we're not showing them a, what a true friendship is, right? That's exactly it. That's exactly it. True. Yeah. True, true, true. Well, I mean, you've helped so many people. You've also helped Coaching with Growth Grow, our social media. Um, you know, we had the ideas of the content in our head, but we didn't really know how to put it out there in a way that was digestible to people. So I appreciate all you've done for Coaching with Growth and the ADHD community. So for people who are 16 or 15 year old, I mean, what would you say to those people right now? The ones that don't know they have ADHD or are just learning they have ADHD. Listen, if you hate school, you don't have to go through it. <laughs> I don't want to well, be that, that guy. Age, but... You know, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's say you're 13. I... Well, first of all, avoid drugs. That's also something you should avoid because that has put me in a lot of bad situations. Like it's, it's so addictive and we follow addictions a lot. Okay, that's it one. It also fries Ooh. your executive functions. It fries your prefrontal cortex. So you have to like rebuild it after doing drugs. Yeah, follow your obsessions really and uh, do something that is that is like free. Don't follow what other people perceive as a good job or something like that where you on a daily basis working towards that goal and working on that goal 
uh, or trying it, you feel like it's not made for you, but you're keeping it and entertaining it because like other people see it as a good thing. Like just take the hit, follow what you, what you're really interested in, keep of uh, being obsessed about it. It's a risk to take, honestly. I'm, I, it's a risk to take. I don't know. Like I don't have an advice for. Yeah, I don't have an advice for fifteen and sixteen Stop years old that. people. Stop that! You are literally. <laughs> this is what you do. You give great advice, and you then can... you make yourself feel bad. Yeah, no, but I. You should understand that everything that I have, or every single decision that I've always taken, was taken badly by everyone around me. It was always a risk and I did not even, I wasn't even aware that it's a risk. For me, it wasn't a risk. For everyone, they're like, are you like stupid or what? How are you like following things that do not exist? They existed only in my mind. Like it also requires a lot of grit to just believe it. You know, the reason why, why do I like you so much, bro? Because you believed in me and not many people really believed in me. And you are one of the uh, rare people that I've talked with in the ADHD niche and just growing up. Uh, and I told you, I can help you with this. And you really went and uh, and proceeded with me. And you uh, even paid for the services and everything. And I was like, wow, like, like the, the actions you've done with me were uh, confidence boosting. And that's why I want to always help you. That's why even after we finished working, I kept on giving you advice. I kept on giving you anything that I've learned. I kept on giving you like new things. That's the reason why. And I'm telling you, like, everyone around is like against you and so it always seems like you're making the bad decision yeah you're yeah, like you're the bad person and, and so on you know what i mean so that's why i don't really want to give advice because it can lead people to bad situations and if they're not really well equipped for for being in mm. bad situations so your advice is to follow your gut essentially follow what you think is best as an ADHD. yeah well, yeah, well, my advice is to follow your gut. And my philosophy is to just always, if the crowd is going here, I'm going to go the opposite side and uh, and uh, natural for me to do so sometimes. I love it. I love it. You're yeah. you're paving the path. You're a vigilante. You're an ADHD vigilante. That's what you are. I don't, I don't know what that word is, but I will Google it now. Sorry, the language <laughs> barrier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You don't follow rules. You do things that are for the greater good because you know it's for the greater good. So just because someone tells you you should do this doesn't mean that you think that you need to follow that, right? Exactly. And sometimes I show it and I stand uh, behind, like I stand behind it and I'm like, no, it should be this way. Sometimes I hide it. I'm like, okay, what's in my mind is going to be in my mind either way. And I hide it until it happens. You got to pick your battles. You don't have to all the time be against the crowd or like show that you're against the crowd or you're against the system and like be that toxic, you know, light, even though inside you're feeling like, ah, oh, why like is everyone like doing this? Too? Like, you know, like why is everyone following whatever something that is that you feel is wrong? Yeah, stick to your principles and your goals and uh, your visions. And uh, that's the most important thing. Wonderful. If people want to find you for ADHD help or support, where can they go? So if they want to find me for ADHD help or support, it's going to be Amine, uh, A-M-I-N-E, Finch, F-I-N-C-H on Instagram. That is where I am uh, the most because I spent a lot of time on Instagram. It's going to be TikTok, honestly. Uh, <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you can just send me a message there and I'll probably see it. He is going to help you grow your Instagram. He really will. And he's so patient and has such good strategy and knows what the latest research is. So I'm almost like biting my tongue in saying this because I got a lot of competition out there. But um, <laughs> I, I, I have a growth mindset. I don't have a scarcity mindset. And I know when there's good people around. So go reach out to me. Thank you. Thank you for, for saying that. I, even anyway, Brooke, like there's only so many people I could work with. Like there's not a lot of time, but uh, I don't even know like if we should mention this, but anyway, it's something that I'm obsessed with. It's my obsession. It's my current obsession. And uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being unsuccessful with ADHD. We'll talk soon. Thanks for listening to this episode of Successful with ADHD. 
I hope it helps you on your journey. And if you need any additional support for you or a loved one with ADHD, feel free to reach out to us at coachingwithbrooke.com and all social media platforms at Coaching with Brooke. And remember, it's Brooke with an E. Thanks again for listening. See you next time.